Good afternoon. I'm happy that we can be in this church once again to study the Word of God and to see what it is to have an identity in Christ. But before doing that, I want to ask everyone who is either holding a book, copying an assignment, or playing with their cell phones to please put it down for the next 30 minutes. Can we do that? Okay, thank you. This won't take long. 30 minutes. If I'm already going over 30 minutes, please raise your hand and tell me, stop, stop, sir, okay? Okay, thank you. Not now. After 30 minutes. Okay. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about Christ living in my heart. The passage that was read just now talks about the heart. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. That means we could accurately say that many times when we think about our treasures, that is where our hearts are. If we think about what is more important to us than our relationship with Jesus, then that is where our hearts are. In 1993, the total attendance at worship services in America was 5.6 billion while the attendance at u.s professional baseball football and basketball games combined was only 103 million contributions for the church that year totaled 56.7 billion ten dollars per person but the amount spent on professional baseball, football, and basketball totaled $4 billion. So you see the big difference. When we put our hearts, we come to church, we worship God, but we, our hearts in giving is not for the Lord's work. But it is more for pleasure work. And so this afternoon, we're going to change this idea of living in my heart. Christ living in my heart is because we want to put our treasure, Christ, into our hearts, not the pleasures of this world. And so before we continue, I want us to pray together. Let us pray. Father, we have in heaven, we come to you this afternoon to start our study. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us, open our minds, and help us to understand you. Come to us right now, Lord, because we need you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Several years ago, a pastor went looking for Jesus in the city. And this pastor was not looking for Jesus who, who was in Galilee. He was looking for Jesus who was risen that Sunday and went up to heaven. And he was working with a theologian and Harvard professor, Harvey Cox. They went around the city looking for Jesus. They knocked at every door and asked, do you know where Jesus is? They went to the malls, they stopped people and they asked, have you seen Jesus? And they got many responses. They got many responses. But this particular pastor said, I can never forget the response 
of one little girl who answered with great enthusiasm when asked, Do you know where Jesus is? You know, the girl answered her, I know where he is. He is in my heart. Jesus lives in my heart. And then she outstretched her arms and she said, I have got a very big house in here. And Jesus is in here. I don't know if we ask you to this afternoon, if you will be able to answer the same answer like this little girl does. Do you know the song, Into My Heart? Can you, can you sing it for me? To my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in, come in, come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Now let me ask you a question. How can Jesus come inside your heart? I pray. <laughs> okay. But literally speaking, can really can Jesus really come inside your heart when Jesus when we know Jesus, we invite him to come into our lives? Does he actually come into our heart where there is full of blood and everything? No. Then how does Jesus come into our hearts? You know, when the pastor talked to that little girl and asked that question, that little girl was so enthusiastic. He said, he is here. My heart is big. That is why she felt, literally speaking, that Jesus was staying inside her heart. The author of the Gospel of John leaves a metaphor for us when talking about the image of Jesus into the heart. He pictures Jesus. He, he pictures the image of Jesus entering the room with his disciples, showing them to their surprise and joy that he is still real. He showed them his wounds and everything. But then, the author John portrays Jesus doing something quite mystical. Jesus breathes on his disciples and fills them with the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed on them and their lives would never be the same. So it is true that Jesus, the resurrected one, is alive in our hearts. Jesus is giving us a new life. And that is why we have Jesus in our hearts. But then still the question comes, how can we actually invite him to live in our hearts? If we want to invite him to come into our hearts, then there should be enough space for him into our hearts. Why did I say that there should be enough space? Because maybe in our lives, we have so much activities. We have so many things that we want to do, that we don't have any more space for Jesus to come into our lives. What am I talking about? What is in your right mind right now? What do you actually want to do after you go home from school? What do you want to do? You want to eat? Okay, good. You're hungry. What else do you want to do? Sleep. What? What else? You want to open your computer, you want to start playing games, you want to open your Facebook, you want to play, what is that? Play. Pray. Oh, you want to pray. Oh, very nice answer. What else? Jogging. You want to go jogging under the rain. 
Oh, you want to study? Oh, very nice. But I did not hear anyone aside from that gentleman at the back pray. I didn't hear anyone else say that they want to study the Bible. Oh, now they can, they say that. Study the Bible. But I know that there are some of us who wants to go home and who can hardly wait to check his or her Facebook. Or who can hardly wait to go and check their email because they are waiting for an email from someone that they are they are wanting to hear from. And so with these many activities, sometimes we tend to leave Jesus out of our lives. We tend to leave Him out. So once again, I want to bring this back. That home, there is, there is, a, there is a saying that home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. Ephesians, let us open our Bible. Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 17. Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 17. Can anybody uh, read that for us this afternoon? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't prepare a PowerPoint for this afternoon. I want to read it for you. Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 17. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Holy Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love. You see, Apostle Paul is saying here that God, he wants Jesus to come and stay into our hearts. He prays that the glorious riches may strengthen that is done by the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul was praying so that the Ephesians will have Jesus to come stay in their hearts. How then can we actually do it? The first thing that we have to remember is that God wants you to honor and serve Him. God wants you to give Him your time by serving Him in many things that we do. Maybe for little children, we say, how do you serve God? They will say, oh, by obeying my parents and doing many other things, helping around the house. They will say that they are obeying God. They are serving God. But for us, what does this thing mean when God wants us to honor and serve Him? Maybe one thing that I want to emphasize when God wants us to honor and serve Him, first, as young people, it's all about ethics on how we behave. Maybe this is the first thing that we as students, as young people need to show that we honor God and we serve Him is about how we bring ourselves. How do we bring ourselves in school? How do we treat our friends? How do we treat our teachers? This is how we honor God in showing respect to others so that by doing so, Jesus can come into our hearts. I want to share with you an experience. You know, when I was young, I was, I was quite naughty. There was one teacher in high school that doesn't want to call me Brian. She always calls me by my family name, Sumendap. And then I was already in third year senior high school. That is equivalent to the fourth year senior high school probably in the Philippines. Because in Indonesia, we have six years of high school. 
three years junior high and three years senior high school. This was my last year in, in high school. And for three years, I tolerated this teacher, always calling me, Sumenda. I told her many times, ma'am, my name is Brian, not Sumenda. That is my father's name. I said, no. So whenever she calls the attendance list, she will say, Raranta Suwalang Sumenda. Where is Sumenda? So one day, when she called me that name, I stood up, ma'am. Again, I want to tell you, ma'am, that this is not my name. Her name was Mrs. Sambeka. And then when, when she said, Sumenda, sit down. I told her, ma'am, how would you like it if your daughter, I will call her Sambeka, Sambeka. Oh, she stood up, she got the book. She got her pen, and then she crossed out my name from the li attendance list. She was our homeroom teacher, by the way. And she said, from this time on, there is no more student, Brian Edward Sumena. I was crossed out from the book of life. That means I cannot take my final exam. That means I cannot... I cannot go to college. Oh, I was so stressed. And she said, from this time on, Sumenda, Brian Edward Sumenda, now she calls me my full name. You are not to be in this classroom anymore. You know, so for three months, every time she comes in to teach, she was teaching Deutsch, you know, German, German language. Every time she comes to class, I immediately go out so sad because I know my name will never be called. You see, this taught me a very big lesson. As a student, we should be obedient to our teachers, whether that be in the elementary section or in the high school section, especially in the senior years. What is the purpose for us coming to school? Is to be taught. No matter what the teachers say, that no matter how we disagree with them, we have to show respect. And that is how we honor and serve God. The second thing that we need to realize, the first thing is to know that God wants us to honor Him. The second thing that we know, that we need to know is that our sin, our sin blocks us from God. Our sin blocks us from pleasing Him. That is why it is such difficult for us, it is such difficult for us to try to become a student or a young man, woman that will try to please God, to honor God. You have to keep this in mind. Because of this, our tendency is to always do something wrong. We will always do. We will always do. We will never be rid of it. But the next thing that we have to remember, the third thing that we have to remember is that even though we are sinful because of our sins is holding us to come close to God, we have to remember that Jesus has already died for our sins. And therefore, we are not separated from God because Jesus has already died for our sins. And so with that thought in mind, we remember the fourth thing, that no matter how hard we try to be good in school, at home, we cannot try to please God because of our works, because we want to be saved. No. We are doing what we want to do to please God, not because, not because we want to go to heaven. No. We have to get, take that concept away from us. We want to do those good things because 
we love Jesus. Why? Because He has died for our sins. And so, because of all those four reasons, what should we do? That means we should accept Christ as our personal Savior. Maybe for you, it's, so, it's, it's quite difficult maybe to fathom the understanding of personal Savior. How about if we say to accept Jesus as a friend? As a friend, but he is more than a friend. He is a very wonderful friend. So these are the things that we need to remember. We accept Jesus as our friend, as our Savior. And by accepting Jesus, we try to turn away from our sins so that Jesus can live within us. And when we achieve all of that, we are assured for the eternal life that God has given us. And so becoming a Christian, becoming obtaining the identity in Christ as Christ followers, we are having these challenges. Okay. Are we already 30 minutes? That's almost. Give me five more minutes. And so, what should we do then? What should we do? To have Jesus live in our hearts. Apostle Paul says, Apostle Paul says, he wishes that Jesus will come into our hearts. And we should try to endeavor this so that Jesus will come into our hearts. These are the steps that we need to follow. First, we need to be dead in our sins. We should let Jesus come and remove those things away from us so that He can come and replace those things that hinders us from Him and work within our hearts. And so, my dear young friends, in closing, I want to appeal to us. In order for us to have Jesus come into our heart, Apostle Paul is saying here that may we be strengthened with power through His Spirit in ourselves. We will need to pray so that the Holy Spirit will come into our hearts and by doing so, we will be obedient to what He wants us to do and that He will live in our hearts. What should we do then? As young people, I know we many times fall into temptations. We, everywhere around us, we can see so many influences that can cripple our minds, that can destroy our bodies. What are these influences that I'm talking about? You know, we are influenced by the media to try alcohol. We are probably influenced by our friends, maybe by our family members, that alcohol will make you macho. Yeah? And for the boys, if you drink beer, beautiful girls will come to you. If you smoke, you will become handsome. You will change. Huh? If you drink an alcohol, as soon as you drink it, oh, your face becomes more shinier. Your hair don't need gel anymore. 
But the reality is that these things will kill you. I remember my first time, I was so curious about smoking because my uncle smokes, smokes like a locomotive. He doesn't sm stop smoking. And so, since my, my parents were the only Adventists in the family, my uncle, my grandfather was smoking. And so while we visited them in the village, I keep on looking at the cigarette. I keep on looking at the cigarette that was on the table. And then, I said, how will it taste if I smoke? So out of curiosity, I got one piece of cigarette, I got the lighter, and I ran to, to the woods. I want to do it there so nobody will see me. So I got that piece of cigarette, I put it in my mouth. I was eight years old at the time. I got the, 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 the this, this match and then I started trying to turn it on. Oh, the wind blew it, it died. The second one, it died again. Oh, the third one, I was successful. And this was a very strong cigarette. In Indonesia, it's called G Samsu. It has no filter. So I noticed that they smoke like this. Oh, okay. So I, I put the cigarette in my mouth, and as soon as it lighted, I, I took a deep breath and went, oh, and I couldn't breathe anymore. You know, pure smoke was entering my lungs, and I. And you know, from that time on, I knew that I should never try to smoke again. Because in the first smoke, it almost killed me. But maybe, boys, you may have tried it. And you may have enjoyed it. And so this afternoon, I am appealing to you. If you want Jesus to come in, my, in your heart, please, let go of it. Don't even try it if you have not tried it. Don't even try it. Don't even to be stupid like me. If you are also on the verge of trying alcoholic beverages, please stay away from it. Studies have, have, that have been made finds that tobacco causes lung cancer. Even in the cigarette smoke pack, what does it say there? Warning. What is the warning about? Cigarette can cause sickness, dangerous for pregnant women, and everything. You see, the, but the, the funny thing with people is they know that it is dangerous. It is said warning there, but they still smoke. Even alcohol, it says there. It's dangerous. But people still drink alcohol. And so I know that we, we want, all of us in this, in this congregation now, because we are in a church, we all want to have Jesus live in our hearts, to come into our lives and to change our life so that we can have an identity with Jesus. In order to do so, let us shut away from these bad influences so that we can live a healthy life, we can be successful in our studies, we can finish academy, we can continue with college and pursue our dreams. And all the while, Jesus is with us. And so one thing that I leave to you, remember this passage that says, in order for Jesus to come to our hearts, we need to pray so that the Holy Spirit will help us to live a life that is meaningful. And that time, Jesus Christ will dwell in your hearts through faith that we do. How many of us wants to have Jesus?
live in our hearts. May I see your hands? How many of us wants to shun away from these bad influences that may influence us? How many of us want to stand so that we will pray for the Holy Spirit to help us live a life that will let Jesus stay? Thank you very much. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be here once again. To study how we can let Jesus come and live in our hearts. As young people, we are faced with so many things that may hinder us from letting Jesus live in our hearts. And because of that, sometimes we lose our identity as Christians, as followers of Christ. And so this afternoon, we have seen the steps that we can follow. We have to realize our sinful being. We have to realize that in spite of our sinful being, Jesus Christ has died for our sins. Therefore, because of our belief in Jesus through faith, we can ask the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, change our lives, so that Jesus can dwell in us. Jesus supreme. And so as our young friends has made the stand, to promise to spend time to pray, asking for the Holy Spirit to change their lives. Please look at them, dear Father. These are our young people. They want to live a life that is changed because of your grace. They want to let Jesus live in their hearts. Look at their dedication this afternoon, dear Father, and help them to fight away temptations in their lives so that they will be victorious Christians, followers. Thank you, dear Father, that you love us and you will answer our prayers. 